In the years following the abolition of slavery, some Americans feared a rise in interracial relationships. So states began passing laws to make sure that any child with a Negro and a white parent could be considered black and denied the rights of white people. In other words, a child with even one drop of Negro blood would be classified as Negro. This became known as the one drop rule, a standard ruled unconstitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1967. This and the hardships of racism also caused African Americans to pass, pretend they were white without ever telling their families, leaving a lot of whites not knowing they had black blood. But some experts on race relations say the legacy of the one drop rule still exists in today's culture. One such expert is Yava Blaine, an African studies scholar who does research on skin color politics. Explain what the one drop rule is. The one drop rule historically, also known as the rule of hypo descent, was really instituted to protect whiteness. Right. It was a way for the white majority to be able to name and incite who was white. So it was one drop, which is one thirty second. One thirty second of Negro or African blood would make that person Negro or African, whatever the classification they used at the time. Yeah. Why do this project then? I mean, what's, what's the purpose? This is my father's. It's a way for us to think about identity, a way for people to define their blackness, if you will, above and beyond legality. So we see blackness as a richer identity than just one drop of blood. How do you quantify blood? What makes me black is my cultural, ethnic, racial background. And so what happens is when you read these uh, contributors' narratives, you come to understand how they see themselves as black or African-American. I am black. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of it. I'm black and I'm proud of it. Why is that important, Doctor? It's important for us to be able to see how people themselves identify. What's interesting is most people in the project say they have this experience of people walking up to them and saying, what are you? So you can look, let's say you look at the website, some of the contributors, you might say they're black. They're black. She could pass, right? This idea of passing. But it's not that they're trying to be anything other than who they are. Yeah, I can so relate to that because everyone in my family is light, lighter than me. Most people, I should say, in my family, especially on my mother's side. And people would, would mistake my mother for white when I was a kid and say, no, your mom wasn't in here. And I'd say, yeah, that's my mom. Oh, I thought she was white. Wow. So people want to categorize that. What is it inside of people that makes them want to put everyone in a category so they know what to do with it? Like, what, what difference does it make? Well, the reality is, is that America was founded on race and racial difference. And still, race absolutely um, defines our experience. But I hear people say we're in a post-racial society. The reality is, in order to get beyond something, you have to understand it, right? Mm -hmm. And where in your education, where have you been required to learn about race? They don't teach it. No. It is the foundation of this country. We have to talk about race. We have to talk about racial difference. It is just a flat-out lie for us to believe that we've moved beyond race. Let's talk about colorism, because I write about, I have a book and I write about colorism, mm -hmm. about the difference between having light skin and dark skin. Light skin was, you were a bit more privileged. Mm -hmm. and, and still in society, people think that way. But it used to be worse. Right. Let's talk about the privileges of having light skin, even if you are um, a person of color. Whiteness is normative, so what that means is that whiteness has come to define what is human, what is valuable, what is beautiful. <laughs> so when we look at women, the ways in which you determine a woman's beauty is based upon her proximity to the white ideal. Aquiline features, straight hair, perhaps colored eyes, different complexion, and the same holds true for men. So again, I think subconscious or otherwise, historically, what that has, has said or communicated is that if you are of lighter skin, we can assume that you have white in your blood. And to have white in your blood makes you less African, makes you less barbaric, makes you more civilized. Yeah. So the One Drop Project, it's just a catalyst. That name is just a catalyst to have a discussion about race. What's so hard about it? Why do you think people find it so hard to have a conversation about race? To discuss race is uncomfortable. You know, historically, white people have been associated with the oppressor. Historically, black people have been associated with being the oppressed. Some people don't want to deal with that reality. I don't want to be associated with that. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not racist. But to talk about race is not to name someone racist. It's to say, let's deal with the reality we're in. Well, the interesting thing, I know, because I get it every time there is a discussion about race, people say, oh, well, racism will be over if you guys on TV stop talking about it. And I go, come on. But where in history do we have an example where silence changed anything? We don't have that example. So silence doesn't make stuff go away. It just makes us silent. 